This is not an NHL issue. It's not an Olympics issue. This is a hockey issue, which involves both the NHL and the Olympics, and the players, and you, the fans. Here's Brody Brazil. Back in 2018, hockey's best players in the world could not participate in the Pyeongchang Olympics because their employers, respective NHL teams, would not allow it. Now, as we emerge towards the halfway point of the next Winter Olympiad, which, by the way, will be held in Beijing, China in 2022, you know the issue is bound to come back up strong in the very near future. Obviously, I have feelings and opinions, but I'm not here to make arguments one way or another. However, at the very least, I do think it's important to see this conflict from all four sides. Beginning with number one, from the player perspective. For any athlete, the Olympic Games only come around once every four years. So not only do you have to be good enough to represent your country, the timing also has to work out too. Some might get only one crack at this, some might get three chances, depending on how good they are, how good they can be, and for how long. Obviously, it just depends. And this is obviously why players are so passionate about participating. There's no money in this. There's not an endorsement deal because of this. There's just a small chance and the big opportunity to take home a medal. This is about legacy and tradition and country. And for the ultimate competitors, a tournament like the Olympics is literally second to none. You cannot blame the players for passionately pursuing this opportunity, but it's also fair to see and say that they're asking for a lot. Number two, from the NHL perspective, it's a huge inconvenience and a huge risk. The Olympic hockey tournament forces the league to shut down entirely for about two weeks, losing out on revenue and traction in their prime months while simultaneously risking the health of its very best players. And then when they do return, the league's top talent are reshifting their body clocks anywhere from eight to 10 to 12 hours, and it takes days and even weeks to catch up. But the games of the NHL don't wait. This is a league which diligently employs these talented players for a reason. There's an obvious conflict of interest here, but there's also an opportunity for the NHL to gain a global reach that the Olympics provides, something the league alone is currently trying to attain but just can't do it all by themselves. Let's face it, there are huge untapped business opportunities for the NHL outside of North America, Russia, and a few European countries. There are definitely markets out there that the Olympics could help the NHL grow into. Number three, from the Olympic perspective, can you actually have a hockey tournament worthy of the Olympic rings and gold medals, yet not actually host any of the world's best players? Doesn't it behoove the Olympics to find basically any way possible to make this happen, to be flexible and workable in the process? I'm not exactly asking the Olympic Committee to beg the NHL's Board of Governors, but the Olympics should definitely pay for players to travel halfway across the world, and they should definitely also cover their insurance costs just in case somebody does get hurt during their NHL season. But there's also something absolutely free that I think they should consider. What about dramatically shifting the timeline here? Hockey is the ultimate winter sport, we know this. But what if ice hockey became an Olympic event at the Summer Games. I know that's jarring, and it sounds terribly odd at first, but it would entirely avoid conflict with the NHL's season schedule. And construction and logistics of a hockey rink, all that could be worked out for the summertime. Like basketball, that's a winter sport in America, but somehow it's part of the Summer Games as it relates to the Olympics. Why not the very same workaround for hockey? Number four, from the fan perspective, obviously you, the hardcore hockey enthusiast, is missing out if the Olympics do not offer the top tournament possible. You have among the most at stake here and yet the least control of all of this, including the built-in time difference. For example, even if the NHL players do get to participate in Beijing 2022, there's going to be anywhere from a 13 to 16 hour time difference ahead of North America, depending on where you're at. In a world of social media and instant alerts, 
some of the fun is instantly removed, knowing that you'll likely be sleeping when these games are actually going on. Now, the only way for a tournament like this to truly resonate here in North America is when it lines up with the timing of North America. Let me know if I missed something here or if there's something else you want to say in the comments section below.